Welcome to Project 47 CJ2A. Join me as I try to bring this old Jeep back to life. Hey, we're on the bigger and better things here now. Uh, engines at the machine shop. Time to start working on the transmission transfer case. So, um, with the use of my three jaw puller, I managed, I took the cover off and pulled the uh, output shaft gear. So that's what drives the transfer case. And this uh, Dewey here would be for your PTO. So if you had a PTO on there, that's how it would engage and uh, drive the PTO. So, as you can see, it's pretty ugly in there. It's, uh, it's, uh, it was full of water. Not an ideal situation, but uh, we're going to start uh, start the disassembly and see if we can separate the transfer case from the transmission. So, let's see how that goes. Separating the Dana 18 transfer case from the T90 transmission was fairly straightforward thanks to some YouTube searches. I was able to find out if there were any tricks. It turns out that there's a fifth bolt down the passenger side of the transmission that comes in from the front side. It catches some people out and has been known to cause crack cases for those who are really determined to try and split them before getting that bolt out. I was lucky. Both output yokes came off without too much of a fight. The next step was to pull the oil pad and see what was inside there. Turns out what was in there was rust, and a lot of it. Um, this transfer case and transmission had both been left out in the elements for some time and were filled with water so the the guts of this transmission were extremely rusty as you can see here. The next step was to pull the emergency brake and the brake shoes off and the backing plate off of the rear drive assembly. The park brake shoes were very oil soaked which is to be expected the oil seal was likely leaking but everything came apart reasonably well. Next piece to come off was the rear seal housing and the speedometer drive. Both shift levers on this transfer case were seized. Nothing was moving. The shift forks weren't moving, but I found after a little bit of work with it, uh, I managed to get them to move, uh, which was good. I got them to slide in and out of high and low range and two and four wheel drive. At this point, that was the only thing in the transmission that was moving. All the gears and shafts inside were seized. Next step was to remove the pin holding the shift levers in place and get the shift levers out of there. Then it was clean the decades of crud and crap out of the bolt holes and remove the transmission shifter front housing. This was a little tricky because one of the shift rods stays with the transfer case and the other shift rod comes out with the front housing. So it uh, took a little bit of uh, finagling to get that split and to come out. Once that front housing was off, I disassembled that. Uh, that's the shifter that uh, engages the two and four wheel drive. So that one came apart. Then it was back to the transfer case itself. I managed to get a pry bar in there and to start to wiggle around actually got things to start to move. Starting first with the output shaft and then with the, uh, with the whole gear train itself. Slowly one tooth at a time I managed to break it free and get it moving. Then it was to remove the intermediate shaft. This uh, particular unit uses an inch and an eighth uh, intermediate shaft. Um, some of them were originally three quarter inch and then later versions were up as big as an inch and a quarter. Knowing the size of the intermediate gear shaft is important when it comes to ordering parts. Next was removing the intermediate gear and the washers and spacers that go with it, the snap ring, and then finally the rear drive output shaft. Then you need to reach in there and cut the lock wire that locks the uh, bolt onto the shifter fork, and then you can remove the shifter shaft from the shifter fork and slide it out of the case. So that's the case pretty much disassembled. Now time to assess the parts and see what kind of parts we're going to need to order. So after a quick wash with Varsol, it's into the sandblasting cabinet.
So uh, transfer case has been fully disassembled and the uh, parts have all been cleaned up, uh, sandblasted and, and uh, so on and so forth, all the external bits um, mostly. So uh, let's have a look at how they look now. There we can see that the, the uh, emergency brake or the park brake backing plate, the rear cover for the transmission or for the transfer case, speedometer drive housing. Uh, this is one of the yokes yet, hasn't quite been made it to the paint shop yet. Uh, that's the front uh, drive shaft yoke. This is for the rear drive shaft. Uh, here is the shift housing. It's all been cleaned out. The oil pan is all cleaned out and sandblasted and painted. And the case. So the case is all cleaned out and ready for reassembly. Unfortunately, uh, upon further inspection of the gears, I don't know if we can tell if we get up right close here, um, we have some, some real pitting issues on some of these gears that have been, uh, uh, they spent, uh, spent a fair bit of time submerged. So um, all the research that I have done uh, regarding that, uh, basically they all say the same thing, don't use them. So we are going to be, uh, we're going to be ordering some new guts for this transmission. Uh, we, will, uh, we will figure out what exactly we need, we'll get them ordered up. And we'll start the reassembly process. I do have a spare transmission and transfer case. Uh, if any of you remember that used to have a transfer case mounted on there, I removed that transfer case uh, from, from the spare transmission and opened it up only to find that uh, it was in fact probably in worse condition than the one I the first one I took apart. So yeah, out of both transmissions and transfer cases. I'm thinking neither one of them is going to be, uh, uh, there's not going to be a lot of salvageable gears out of them, so. Well, that's the status with the transmission and the transfer case. Um, well, the transfer case anyways. Uh, parts are all disassembled, cleaned up to the best of my abilities for now. And uh, yeah, we're waiting on some parts. I'm going to keep this short because uh, it was minus 30 here this morning and uh, I didn't put a fire on in the garage. It's pretty chilly in here. So uh, let's head back in the house where it's warm. Burr. Like and subscribe and stay tuned for future episodes. Thanks for watching.